Good evening, Councillors. I'll now call to order the City County Council meeting for Monday, January the 10th, 2022. And we will begin our meeting with the prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councillor Jackson. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to be here. The first uh, council session of the year. Before we start and do that, uh, Councillor Oliver would like to do an, a special presentation on behalf of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. To all of my fellow councillors and the public, It starts with me. I ask my fellow counselors to pause tonight to reflect on the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. It's very fitting, I think, that we remember Dr. King on the same night that members of the Indianapolis Youth Commission are here with us. Dr. King's call to peaceful resistance, to justice for the oppressed and the impoverished, to a dream of equality of all people always resonated most loudly in the hearts of youth. He shared their ability to imagine a world more peaceful and more just than their own and their faith that they can bring that world to life. The theme of MLK Day 2022 is, mm -hmm. it starts with me. As we start our first council meeting at the start of this new year, I ask that each of us tonight consider how more peaceful and more just Indianapolis would be. It starts with us. Thank you, fellow counselors and the public. Again, it starts with me, it starts with you, it starts with us. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you all. At this time, I call to do a prayer for us, Pastor Richard Reynolds, thank you. And he's also, um, um, Vice President of the Indianapolis Urban Pastors Coalition. We did a press conference today for unity, so it does start with us. Pastor, you want to tell the name of your church and, and go ahead and lead us in prayer, please. I'm grateful for this opportunity to share. Again, I'm Richard Reynolds, and I pastor New Revelation Christian Church here in the northeast side of the city of Indianapolis. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, it is the day that you have made, and we rejoice and we are glad in it. We're grateful for your goodness, your guidance, and for your grace. We pray that you continue to bless this city council, that you continue to bless our city. We're grateful for every servant leader and for their selfless sacrifice and service to our city and the districts that they represent. We pray your blessing on their families, their careers, their marriages, their children, we pray that you shower them with your wisdom and with compassion and that they lead this city with righteousness and justice. We pray in the name of Jesus that you bless them as we all seek the peace of our city, the city that we all live in, the city that we all love. We pray that you would bless them and shower them with love and with grace and with wisdom and that they would be representatives of peace. They would be peacemakers who would rise up and help to make our city a better place for all of us to dwell in. Lord, help them to help us. And we thank you for the vision that it all begins with us. Thank you, Lord. Bless this meeting. Bless this year. In Jesus' name, in the name of God we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reynolds. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Jackson. Welcome back, counselors. Please select your green button to indicate your attendance, please. All right, we have 21 members present, uh, Vice President uh, Zach Adamson, and Councilors uh, Brown, um, Evans, Muscari, and McCormick have asked to be excused um, because of illness. We have no guests this evening uh, who are already not part of the agenda, so we will proceed to organization of council. May I have consent to select General Counsel Tori Kim as temporary presiding officer over the election of officers. All right, Ms. Kim. Thank you, Mr. President. The first office for election is President of the Council for 2022. The chair will now entertain nominations for that position. Councilor Evans. Thank you, Council. Mr. President, it's my distinct honor to nominate yourself, President Vaposley, to the position of President of the City County Council. Second. There's a nomination and second for President Osley. Are there any other nominations for President of the Council? Um, I make a motion to close the nominations. Okay. Second. second. Okay. We have a motion and second to close nominations. If that motion is adopted, the effect will be to re-elect President Osley as President of the Council for 2022. So all those in favor of closing nominations, thereby re-electing President Osley, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Congratulations, President Osley. <laughs> Mr. President, would you like to make any remarks? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Kim. And I just want to say to my fellow counselors uh, that I'm grateful for the opportunity to continue to serve alongside of all of you as both a counselor and council president and, and look forward to working together with every member of the council. Um, uh, to positively impact the lives of, uh, of all of our neighbors as we continue to work to make Indianapolis a city of equity and peace. Thank you. The next office for election is Vice President of the Council for 2022. I will now entertain nominations for that position. Councilor Lewis. Thank you, Madam Council. It is my honor and pleasure to nominate Zach Adamson as Vice President of the Indianapolis City County Council. Second. There's a nomination and second for Vice President Adamson. Are there any other nominations for Vice President of the Council? Councilor Jones. I make a motion to close nominations. For I Vice second. President. Okay. There's a motion and second to close nominations. If the motion to close nominations is adopted, the effect will be to re-elect President, um, Vice President Adamson as Vice President of the Council for 2022. All those in favor of closing nominations, thereby re-electing Vice President Adamson, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. The ayes have it. Congratulations, Vice President Adamson. The final office for election is Clerk of the Council for 2022. I will now entertain nominations for that position. Councilor Potts. Thank you, Council Kim. Uh, it is my honor to nominate in recognition of so much great work that she's done for this council over the years, Sarita Hughes, to serve as Clerk of the Council for 2022. Second. There's a nomination and second for Clerk Hughes. Are there any other nominations for that position? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to close nominations. We have a motion and second to close nominations. So all those in favor of closing nominations, which would elect Clerk Hughes as Clerk of the Council for 2022, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. 
The ayes have it. Congratulations, Madam Clerk. That completes the election of officers. I now relinquish the gavel as temporary presiding officer to per President Osley to proceed with the meeting. Thank you very much, Ms. Kim. Now, the next item on our agenda is a certification of caucus leaders. Madam Clerk, have you received certification from the caucuses regarding majority and minority leader appointments? Yes, Mr. President. I have received certification with signatures from the majority caucus, electing Maggie Lewis as the majority leader, and from the minority caucus, electing Brian Mary as minority leader. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, congratulations to um, all our elected officials, and uh, I think we all look forward to working together uh, in this coming year. Madam Majority Leader, um, would you um, uh, please come forward to make um, perfect attendance presentations um, to our members? Thank you, Mr. President. It is my honor to celebrate uh, some of my colleagues who, not all, all of my colleagues work extremely hard, but there are a handful that who have attended every single council meeting and committee meeting. So again, it is my honor to celebrate them um, this evening. So as I announce your name, please come forward. And again, we are thrilled to celebrate you this evening. Um, the first person on the list is actually not here this evening, but I do want to acknowledge Vice President Adamson for his perfect attendance. The next person is Chairman Leroy Robinson, if you would come forward. And let's celebrate Chairman Robinson for all of his commitment. Thank you, sir. Hmm? You get a pen? Yeah. The next person I'd like to celebrate, oh wow, she is, um, unable to attend the meeting this evening, but I do want to acknowledge her again for her commitment, Councillor McCormick. Um, and then on our list is Mr. President Bob Osley. You come forward and let us celebrate you for your dedication. <clears throat> Are you surprised you didn't miss any meetings? Congratulations, sir. <laughs> and last and certainly not least, Chairman Oliver. Mr. Oliver, if you would please come forward and let us celebrate you. So again, to all of our colleagues, thank you for your hard work all, all year long and thank you for your commitment to our city. Thank you. Mr. President, I, I do have one more, Mr. President. Yes, please. We'd like to take this moment, Madam Leader, to acknowledge and honor you as well for having perfect attendance for the 2021 council year. So Madam Leader, congratulations to you. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you very much. So this next item on our agenda is official communications. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, you are hereby notified that meetings of the, council, of the City County Council and Police, Fire, and Solid Waste Collection Special Service District Councils will be held in the City County Building in the Council Chambers on Monday, January 10, 2022 at 7 o'clock p.m. The purposes of such meetings being to conduct any and all business that may properly come before regular meetings of the council. Sincerely, Bob Osley, President, City County Council. Ladies and gentlemen, I have approved with my signature and delivered this day to the clerk of the City County Council, Sarita Hughes, the following ordinances. Fiscal ordinance numbers 30 through 33, general ordinance numbers 42 and 43, special ordinance numbers 21 and 22, general resolution numbers 20 through 23 and special resolution numbers 37 and 38. Jo jo sorry, Joseph H. Hoxat, Mayor. Mr. President, this concludes the official communications. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Do I have consent? Yes. The next item on our agenda is approval of journals for December the 6th, 2021. Do I have consent? 
We'll now proceed to presentation of petitions, memorials, and special resolutions. Proposal number one recognizes the work of the city's local community development corporations. Um, Councillor Graves. Thank you, Mr. President. The City of Indianapolis uh, and the Council, Marion County, want to uh, thank you for the opportunity to present a special resolution, special resolution number one, 2022. It's a special resolution recognizing the contributions of grassroots, nonprofit, and community partner organizations to community well being. It reads, Whereas this council has historically defined public safety services primarily as law enforcement, fire, and emergency medical services, and has ensured the comprehensive delivery of such services through direct jurisdictional oversight and funding, and whereas well before COVID-19 pandemic, law enforcement, fire, and emergency medical staff have been increasingly called upon to respond to situations related to homelessness, addiction, and mental health crisis, which often require community-based treatment and services. And whereas multiple studies have demonstrated that local programming and services which support families and strengthening neighborhoods, including stable and affordable housing, early childhood support, supports quality education, after school programs, the arts, healthy and accessible food, workforce development, and accessible green spaces contribute to safer communities and whereas. Whereas in 2017, researchers at NYU drawing on 20 years of data from 264 cities estimated that every 10 addiction, additional grassroots nonprofit organization focusing on crime and community life in a city with the 100,000 residents leads to a 9% reduction in the murder rate, a 6% reduction in the violent crime rate, and a 4% reduction in property crime rate. And whereas, sir. Whereas there are 15,677 grassroots and nonprofit organizations in the greater Indianapolis area whose missions, services, and programs range from health and social services to civic engagement, arts and culture, environmental protection, sports and recreation, and more, and whereas local grassroots groups and nonprofit organizations understand the multifaceted context and issues that affect our city and provide innovative solutions while also creating a sense of trust in our community and whereas the city of indianapolis will invest roughly 45 million over the next three years into grassroots groups working to diminish violent crime by providing counseling and services aimed at reducing impulsive retaliation increasing restorative justice practices and supporting violence interruption. Now, therefore. Be it resolved by the City County Council of the City of Indianapolis and of Marion County, Indiana. Section one, the Indianapolis City County Council recognizes the vital role that grassroots and nonprofit organizations play in addressing many of the root causes of violence in our city and acknowledges the immense public benefit those essential organizations contribute to our community. The council finds that our city's grassroots nonprofit and community partner agencies are an imperative and integral component 
and the creation of public safety for residents. Section three reads, the council expresses its support for all such organizations and, command, and commends their work in helping Indianapolis residents navigate the impact and aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Section four, the mayor is invited to join in this resolution by affixing his signature here to section five, the, this resolution shall be in full force and effect upon adoption and compliance with IC 36.3.4.14. This special resolution was sponsored by Councilor Graves and was passed by the city council on this 10th day of January, 2022. So moved. Second. Second. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. All right, the motion carries back to the speakers. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I would absolutely like to say that uh, what we've uh, been able to accomplish over these last few years, particularly last year's budget, uh, we've been able to do our level best to fight crime. We've done it on a proactive approach, which has been something that we can be proud of, putting more police on the ground and funding those important components within criminal justice. Why I'm extremely proud today is because we've now saw the importance of putting equal effort to preventive measures. That is the grassroots organizations. It's well known that this solution is not just one that law enforcement can handle. We are in an environment where we need all hands on deck. And that starts with those men and women and people in our community that have the heart to help, and that's our grassroots organizations. I have two such organizations, three or so here, but I'd love to bring up two if it's okay with you, Mr. President. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Fletcher and Lashana Triplett and Ashley Gervitz. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President, and to the members of our City County Council. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Um, as a city as a whole, we understand the importance that the policies you make, the voices you listen to, are a full reflection of how we are moving as a community together. Um, as someone that's had past experience working in constituent services, every single day you would hear the calls of, what do we do to make sure our lights aren't being cut off? What do we do to ensure the needs that are happening within our homes, such as a parent being absent due to incarceration, or as I say, on vacation temporarily, that their homes can still be secure? The fact that in 2020 alone, the instant impact your decisions made, it made from the tops to the grassroots of grassroots organizations, know we're heard. It may not have had its effect right away of knowing how we do organize, but I can wholeheartedly say today, especially in our community of the United Northeast CDC area catchment, where we had some of our highest rates of unemployment, education attainment with lower levels. We're able to now know because of your invitation, bringing grassroots to the table, progress is being made. And I thank you so much for that. The funding even alone from the aspects of the criminal justice plans, crime prevention, that funding allowed us to know that it was a seed, but a, a large seed that helped strengthen our community partnerships to come together. For instance, over the summer, little funding through the city county council crime prevention bid throughout one event where we thought we could organize potentially 250 of our residents within the 46218, 226, and 205 communities, we actually were able to help expand because our partners came together and understood the collective resources that we had. That expounded to three collective events and over 600 residents served with the seeds that you've given. So thank you so much for that. 
that funding as well allowed even the ability of creating new workforce, educational pipelines, but most importantly, hope pipelines. When George Floyd happened, we didn't know what we were gonna do. But again, your funding allowed us to come back to the table and really assess how we can all do this together. So with that, I truly do thank you and wanna also share that your funding will also be immensely appreciated where we were just a year ago and where we are going into 2022, this year we'll celebrate a new grocery store coming into the neighborhood. When no one wanted to come from the organization structures to feed us, you'll hear from the triplets. They were giving 800 boxes a week and I'm wondering how are their cars just going line by line getting fed? It was our door by door efforts that allowed that to happen and we thank them. And most importantly, we know with the, there being this mindset of neglect or the negatives, what you are all doing today is allowing the sense of us all being heard together and that we shift our perspectives, we can shift the directions of how we're being seen as a city to one that is positive. And that positive bit allowed us to even be able to help secure 100 jobs, all average starting livable wage and free education paid up front. So again, thank you all for what you do, for everyone, as far as our council that helps support it, bringing our neighborhood mom and pops, the ones inside the homes that are working with our opportunity youth, and others that aren't here today. It's because of your efforts of making sure we can be included. We know that there's more that we can look for in 2022. So again, thank you. Thank you, council members. Mr. President and to the council, um, my name is Lashana Triplett and I am here with my husband Fletcher Triplett and we represent a grassroots organization in the 46218 area and 46226 area. As a grassroots um, organization founder, I truly appreciate the council coming together and investing in our community, not just talking about it, but putting action and funding behind it. Talk is great funding is necessary and it has allowed us to expand services that were not would not be possible without the backing and I truly truly as humbly as I can say appreciate the council for focusing on mental health and helping us as grassroots organizations get to the root causes as we are allowed to focus on trauma and figure out the trauma narratives we are allowed are able to help fight crime because we are able to help our community and our residents understand where their trauma is and be able to direct it in a positive manner instead of in a negative aggressive manner. And I will close with saying as a child, I had a, if I had a fever, my mother would give me Tylenol to figure out what is going on. Crime and behaviors, it's a symptom. Something is causing that internally. With your funding, we have been together collectively as grassroots organizations to figure out what is causing these outward and negative responses. So again, on behalf of MLT Outreach, I humbly, as I can say, thank you for your support and we will continue to fight and do our best to make sure that what you have invested in goes as far as we can stretch it. Thank you. Mr. President, finally, I'd like to invite any councilmen, women that may want to speak. I just want to say um, I am humbled for this special resolution. I work for uh, a not-for-profit organization as an ED, and uh, we were not first responders, but we were on the first line especially when COVID hit. I don't think many people understood that we were in the trenches. Um, we've been in the trenches. I've known Ashley for years and the great work that she's been doing through various organizations and on, um, in the community. And I got the opportunity to miss um, Triplett and her husband, meet them this uh, uh, past year. And they were loading groceries in their SUV. And I, and I thought, what an honor just to meet them and work with them. Uh, great group of uh, great people, humble people. 
servant people, servant leadership. So these are the people that your, your, your tax dollars are, they're actually doing the work. I've actually seen them do the work. They are doing the work. And um, it's amazing to see the lives that they're touching, impacting, and changing in a positive way. So folks, when you don't have to think twice. You got a council person that are seeing these impact and seeing some of the data that comes. These people have data. Ms. Triplett can share her data and the impact lies on the outcomes that it's changed. Whenever you want to see it or hear it, she can whip you a presentation together and let you see that. So I just wanted you to personally firsthand see it from me that I'm in the trenches alongside of them, working with them on, like she said, how do we get to the symptom of the trauma and what's going on. So thank you again for this opportunity. And it's, so, uh, it's an honor to work with you all. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilors. The next item on our agenda is proposal number two, which recognizes the Indianapolis Youth Commission. Councilors. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we have a special resolution recognizing the Indianapolis Youth Commission. Whereas on December 7th, 2020, the Indianapolis City County Council unanimously approved the creation of the Indianapolis Youth Council with the purpose of hearing from the city's youth. The commission is formed by eight members of various ages, ranging from 14 to 19 years, who make recommendations to the council regarding important issues affecting youth in the city and whereas the commissioners have all participated in a variety of community engagement opportunities including public speaking events panel discussions petitions youth events and violence prevention awareness campaigns city departments and organizations such as indigo the indianapolis metropolitan police department and marion county commission on youth the Office of Public Health and Safety and Voices Corporation have met with the commissioners to help with their mission. And whereas, whereas the commissioners have received support from their city county councilor members, Councilor Allie Brown, Krista Carlino, Ethan Evans, Keith Graves, Michael Paul Hart, Kristen Jones, Jason Larison, and Vop Osley, and received additional support from Brandon Randall and Bernard Mickle, and whereas the first cohort of commissioners will graduate on December 21st, 2021, the graduating commissioners are Shanice Brown, Ronnell Collins, Madison Geis, Kari Geis, Jared Johnson, Key Johnson III, James Jones, Alan Medina, and Bodler St. Louis, and whereas the members of the 2021 cohort will continue their education with support from teachers, mentors, and community leaders who have helped shape their lives so they can be outstanding examples of citizens and role models to those in the communities where they live and work. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City County Council of the City of Indianapolis and of Marion County, Indiana. <laughs> it's a small case that I got to eat by folks that day. <laughs> kind of tough for me. <laughs> Section one. The City County Council recognized the Indianapolis Youth Commission for their work during this past year. Section two, councilors extend their appreciation to the Indianapolis Youth Commission and commissioners of 2021 for all that they do for the community and their willingness to serve the city and wishing them success in their future endeavors. Now, section three, 
The mayor is invited to join this resolution that affixes his signature here too. Section four, this resolution shall be in full force and effect upon adoption and compliance with IC 36-3-4-14. This special resolution was sponsored by Councilor Jones, Carlino Brown, E. Evans, Graves, Osley, Larson, and Hart, and was passed with the motion, Mr. Chairman. I so move for its Thank adoption. You, Motion's been properly moved and, and seconded. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. And the motion carries back to the speakers. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, can we have a few moments to say something? Thank you very much. It was just such an honor and a privilege to be part of this program. As I, as I told our commissioners when we had our celebration la a couple weeks ago, I think I learned more from my student and my youth than uh, maybe he imparted on me. I hope James is watching tonight. Um, congratulations, James, if you're watching tonight. Um, but I would like to give them an opportunity and very much kudos to Bernard and Brandon. Thank you, they're amazing leaders. Um, so g please give them um, major kudos for having this program and bringing us as counselors along um, for this journey. Um, thank you for allowing us to be part of this. So, but I would like to give them an opportunity to share some words of wisdom to us tonight. Awesome, thank you. All right, my, uh, my boss is in the room and she told me she's gonna hold up signs so I don't speak too long. Um, council president and uh, counselors, thank you for having us this evening. I want to reiterate that tonight is uh, an acknowledgement of these young people. Um, we had eight amazing young people, um, Shanice, Madison, Ronnell, James, Kyrie, Bowler, Allen, and Jared. Um, but I want to give you some details on what they accomplished in just over half of a year. So just to give you a little bit of information, the timeline. So we started meeting informally um, in April, um, and by May, they were all sworn in officially. Um, and they started having meetings from May until December. In that very short timeline, they were able to uh, receive asset-based community development training, communications training, corporate and civic engagement training, and proposal and resolution training by our amazing clerk, uh, Ms. Sarita Hughes. Um, some accomplishments in the short time we had. Um, they had re they released two press releases um, regarding the surge in violence, once in July and once in September. They, were, uh, um, they attended uh, and reviewed budget meetings for their specifically assigned committees to get a behind the scenes look. They brainstormed on three key focus areas, law enforcement, um, violence interruption, and um, homelessness intervention. And out of that, they were able to initiate conversations with IMPD, OPHS, and Indigo and the Public Transportation Foundation. And I would like to recognize them uh, because of that hard work, um, ongoing um, conversations and systemic impact are currently happening. Uh, with IMPD, we're looking at creating some youth training teams to train new officers uh, from a youth perspective while focusing on engagement, accountability, hiring, and ongoing assessments. Um, with the Office of Public Health and Safety, um, Lauren Rodriguez has been absolutely amazing um, in her support, um, creating an opportunity for them to meet and train with David Muhammad um, and to get a youth perspective on how to impart some youth violence uh, prevention and intervention methods here in our city. Also working with Sade Hoskins, on exploring ways to train uh, the new peacekeepers from a youth perspective. Um, and then, shout out to Commissioner Bodler. Um, he was the one and only commissioner focusing on Indigo and supporting the staffing of a social worker at the Transit Center, uh, which is literally across the street. And because of that conversation, we are now having um, discussions with Indigo and the Public Transportation F Foundation on creating a whole wraparound services program to support people experiencing homelessness and other transient demogra uh, demographics um, that, way to, that way to increase access. Um, and then just to give a little bit of data, and then I promise I'll be done. 
Um, 87 and a half percent of our students or commissioners uh, stated that they had increased confidence in the ability to engage in civic and political discussions. 100 percent said the program increased their ability to advocate for systemic change. And then half, well, 50 percent of them increased significant growth in their community conversation, access to city county council meetings, meeting with elected officials, and conducting research uh, for um, social justice and civic engagement. So these young people have done an amazing job in about seven months, and I think that they deserve an amazing round of applause. Thank you. Thank you to the Indianapolis Youth Commission. Turn to our young counselors. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 24, which recognizes National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Counselors? Thank you, Mr. President. With your permission, I'd like to invite Mr. Kenneth Allen forward to accept this special resolution. Yes, please. A special rec resolution recognizing, recognizing National Human Trafficking Prevention Month, whereas human trafficking is defined as the use of force, threat of force, or, or coercion to to force an individual to engage in commercial sex, marriage, labor, criminal activity, or other services. Human trafficking is a pervasive problem that affects individuals of all ages from childhood to adulthood. And whereas, Whereas human trafficking is an aberrant abuse of power and a heinous crime that affects the safety, health, and dignity of millions of people locally and globally, human trafficking is the fastest growing and second largest criminal industry in the world, generating roughly 150.2 billion worldwide. And whereas? Whereas recent data shows that 2019 saw a 19% increase in a single year in human trafficking reports in Indiana. In that year alone, 157 human trafficking cases from Indiana were reported to the National Human Trafficking Hotline, 40 of which involved minors. Indiana is at high risk for human trafficking because of its specific location as a state with a number of intersecting national highways and... Whereas in spite of these facts, only 10, per, excuse me, only 10 arrests for human trafficking were made in Indiana in all of 2019. And whereas nearly half, 46.4% of human trafficking charges in the U.S. were cleared or dropped in 2019. Victim rights groups say that human trafficking across the country has risen during the COVID-19 pandemic and... Whereas the 2020 Indiana State Report on Human Trafficking reveals that there have been documented cases of forced marriage, forced labor, and sex trafficking of minors and adults across all 92 counties in Indiana. And whereas... Although trafficking <clears throat> excuse me, has no boundaries for its victims, it disproportionately impacts ethnic and racial minorities, women and girls, LGBTQI plus individuals, vulnerable migrants, and other historically marginalized and underserved communities, meaning it is essential to con continue to conduct preventive outreach for those populations identified as a high risk of trafficking and whereas. 
Whereas January is National Human Trafficking Prevention Month, and this council has a civic duty to recognize the vital role we play in combating human trafficking and to, and to observe every month with appropriate activities and programs aimed at preventing every and all forms of human trafficking. Now, therefore, Be it resolved by the City County Council of the City of Indianapolis, Marion County, Section 1. The City of City County Council recognizes that human trafficking is a pervasive problem affecting thousands of people, including our own city and state. Section 2. The Council expresses its support for multidisciplinary partnerships and policies advocacy to alleviate the inadequacies and the structural violence that contributes to human trafficking victims feeling trapped in their exploitation. Section three, the mayor is invited to join us in this resolution by fixing his signature here too, and he has. Section four, this resolution shall be full of force and effect upon adoption compliance IC 36-3-4-14. This special resolution has been sponsored by Councilor Lewis, Barth Boots, Carlino, Evans, well, E. Evans, J. Evans, Jackson, Jones, Larison, Muscari, McCormick, Oliver, Osley, and Ray, and was passed by the City and County Councilor this 10th day of January 2022. Mr. President, I so move. Okay. Motion's improperly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, signify by nay. Thank you. Uh, motion carries back to the speakers. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Allen to say a few words with your permission, Mr. President. Please proceed. Thank you. President Osley, counselors, thank you all so much for taking time out of your schedule to recognize this very important issue that affects, unfortunately, too many of our fellow neighbors. Uh, for those of you all that do not know, on January the 11th, it is National uh, Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Uh, the entire month of January is recognized as National Human Traffic Awareness um, Month. The question is often asked is how many individuals in my district, in my city, are trafficked by, are trafficked? And as a father of a teenager girl, one is too many. And so this crime, we see it every day. Uh, our program is designed to make sure that everyday individuals know what the signs are, how to recognize it, and how to report it. So thank you all for wearing your lovely blue lapel pins and recognizing this very important cause. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 25, which recognizes Reese Hamilton for his commitment to creating opportunities to promote peace in his community. Mr. Mr. President, I move that we postpone proposal number 25 to the next council meeting. Second. All right, that's a move and seconded. Um, just by voice vote, um, Madam Council. That's fine with unanimous right. consent. May I, may I have consent? Consent. All right, very good. Um, next item on agenda is proposal number 26, which recognizes the extraordinary life of Al Anser Sr. and his, contrib his contributions to auto racing, a sport vital to local tourism, the economy, and the identity of the city of Indianapolis. Councilors. Thank you, Mr. President. If it's all right, I want to ask your permission if we can ask uh, Al uh, Unser Jr. to come up and accept, as well as his uh, wife Norma, to come up and accept this re do. special resolution. Thank Please you, do. Sir. Thank you. So, a special resolution recognizing the extraordinary life of Al Unser Sr. and his contributions to auto racing, a sport that is vital to local tourism, the economy, and the identity of the city of Indianapolis. Whereas the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is Indianapolis's most recognizable landmark. 
In 2019, the Indianapolis 500 race at the Motor Speedway drew 5.5 million television viewers and over 300,000 in-person attendees. And whereas in 2021, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway led the way for the sport to return to normal amidst a global pandemic. And whereas the world has had the pleasure of witnessing Al Unser Sr. become one of only four drivers to win the Indianapolis 500 four times and Whereas, along with many of his incredible achievements, Al Unzer Sr. was the oldest driver to ever take the checkered flag at the Indianapolis 500, showing that age is only a state of mind. And, whereas Unzer finished his career with 39 IndyCar wins, sixth on the all-time list, and he won IndyCar season championships in 1970, 1983, 1985. And, Whereas, according to Mario Andretti, quote, Al Unser Sr. was one of the smartest drivers I've ever raced against. And he often said, quote, I wish I could have had some of his patience. <laughs> and whereas Al Unser Sr. is one of the most iconic names in Indianapolis 500 history, which has contributed immensely to the legacy of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and whereas Unzer was inducted into the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Hall of Fame in 1986 and the International Motorsports Hall of Fame in 1998. And whereas Al Unzer Sr.'s remarkable life and dedication to Indianapolis, the Indianapolis 500, and auto racing will always be remembered by the city of Indianapolis and all race fans. Now therefore, be it resolved by the City County Council of the City of Indianapolis and of Marion County, Indiana, at Section 1, the Indianapolis City County Council proudly recognizes the extraordinary life and contributions to the city made by Al Unser Sr., who passed away on December 9, 2021, after battling cancer for 17 years. And Section 2, that the mayor is invited to join this resolution by affixing his signature here too. And Section 3, that this resolution be in full force and effect upon the adoption and compliance with IC 36-3-4-14. Uh, Mr. President, I so move. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? All right, motion carries. I'm back to the speakers. Thank you, Mr. President. And, and I really, so I'll keep this brief. Uh, we've done a lot of these this evening, but I, I, I really have to say that you know, what we're witnessing tonight, right, where we have this championship game downtown is because of prior events that we've had at events like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where this man, Alan Sir Sr., has drawn in millions of viewers on TV. He's drawn them into our city. And what it takes for cities like Indianapolis to grow are people to come here. When they come here, they see how amazing our city is, and they want to move here. And that's what makes our city so spectacular. And that is just one of the many achievements that Alan Sr. Senior has done for the city of Indianapolis. And I'm extremely proud to sponsor this resolution and hand it over to his son, Alan Sir Jr. So I want to present this to you, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. And thank you. Uh, if it's all right, Mr. President, that he say a few words as well. Please proceed. All right, that's all you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, city councilors. Um, my dad, if he were here this evening, he'd say, this is really neat, <laughs> is what he would say. And so uh, we're honored about this, and, and we just want to thank you for, uh, for having this. Thank you, Michael. And, uh, and also, um, I just want to say thank you for all your work that you do in the service. I've, I've lived here in Indianapolis since uh, fall of 2017, and uh, I've been coming here my whole life, but my home is Albuquerque, New Mexico, my hometown. And, but uh, we've been living here ever since, and, and I just got married this last summer to a beautiful lady here that's an Indiana girl. So uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. Into your achievements as well, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I got a bum ankle. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Thank you. 
Right, thank you, councillors. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 347, referred to Administration and Finance Committee. I believe, Madam Leader. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 347 appoints Mark Carter II to the Equal Opportunity Advisory Board. The proposal passed out of committee by a vote of 10 to 0, and I so move, Mr. President. All right, motion's been properly moved and seconded. Are there comments from councillors? All right, seeing none, uh, let us proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries 19 to zero. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 372, referred to Administration and Finance Committee. Uh, Madam Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 372 appoints Brandon Cosby to the Equal Opportunity Advisory Board. The proposal passed out of committee by a vote of 10 to zero, and I so move. All right, motion's been properly moved and seconded. Are there comments from councilors? All right, seeing none, let us proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries uh, 19 to 0. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 384, referred to Parks and Recreation Committee. Chairman Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Park and Recreation heard this proposal. It was moved by Councilor Carlino, second by Councilor Osley, to send proposal 384 to the full council with a due pass, a, a vote of 6 to 0. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. Other comments from councillors? All right, seeing none, let us proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries 19 to 0. The next item on the agenda is proposal number 385, referred to Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee. Chairman Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President. Councillor Boots chaired that meeting this, uh, a few days ago, and he'll be doing the minutes this evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal 385 reappoints Louis Profeta to the Indianapolis Marion County Forensic Services Board. Councillor Carino moved, Carlino, I apologize, moved, seconded by Councillor Oliver to send proposal number 385 to the full council with a due pass recommendation. The motion carried by a vote of 11 to 0. I so move, Mr. President. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. Are there comments from councillors? Right, seeing none, let us proceed to the board for a vote. Motion carries uh, 19 to 0. The next item on agenda is proposal number 388, referred to Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee, acting uh, Chair Boots. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 388 reappoints Linda Crocheron to the Marion County Community Corrections Advisory Board. Councilor Oliver moved, seconded by Councilor Carlino to send proposal number 388 to the full council with a due pass Recommendation, the motion carried by a vote of 11 to 0. I so move, Mr. President. Motion's improperly moved and seconded. Other comments from councillors? All right, seeing none, let's proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries 19 to 0. The next item on agenda is proposal number 400, referred to a Municipal Corporations Committee. Mr. President, yeah. on behalf of uh, Chairman Gray, I would like to provide the update. Yes, um, uh, Councilor Graves, please. Thank you. On December 15th, uh, the Municipal Corporation Committee met uh, to hear proposal number 400, 2021, which reappoints Monica Crane to the Marion County Health and Hospital Corporation Board of Trustees. Council Gray's moved, seconded by Council Mowry, to send proposal number 400 2021 
to the full council with a due pass recommendation. The motion carried by a vote of five to zero. So moved. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. Are there comments from councillors? All right, seeing none, let's proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries 19 to zero. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 405, referred to Public Works Committee. Councillor Carlino. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in Vice President Adamson's absence, he asked that I read the minutes out. Proposal number 405, 405 appoints Ken Beach to the Marion County Stormwater Management Technical Advisory Committee. Mr. Beach stated he is happy to serve and he's been in the storm, excuse me, been in the wastewater business for a while and he's grateful for this opportunity. Councilor McCormick moved, seconded by Councilor Carlino to send proposal 405, 2021 to the full council with a due pack pass recommendation. The motion carried by a vote of 10 to zero. Mr. President, I so move. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. Other comments from councilors? All right, seeing none, let's proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries 19 to zero. The next item on our agenda is introduction of proposals. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal numbers 22 and 23 and three and four refer to the Administration and Finance Committee and were introduced by Councilor Muscari. Proposal number 22 approves the mayor's appointment of Taylor Schaefer as the chief deputy mayor. Proposal number 23 approves the mayor's appointment of Jeff Bennett as the deputy mayor of community Deve development. Proposal number three approves the mayor's appointment of Judith B. Thomas as the deputy mayor for neighborhood engagement. Proposal number four approves the mayor's appointment of Joe Glass as the director of the Office of Audit and Performance. Proposal numbers five through eight refer to the Metropolitan and Economic Development Committee. <laughs> Proposal number five, introduced by Councillor Lewis, approves the mayor's appointment of Brian D. Madison as the director of the Department of Business and Neighborhood Services. Proposal number six, introduced by Councillor Lewis, approves the mayor's appointment of Scarlett Andrews as the director of the Department of Metropolitan Development. Proposal number seven, introduced by Councillor Mascari, approves the 2022 budget of the Greater Virginia Avenue Corridor Economic Improvement District. Proposal number eight, introduced by Councilor Adamson, approves the 2000, I'm sorry, the 2022 budget of the Woodruff Place Economic Improvement District. Proposal number nine, introduced by Councilor Oliver, referred to the Parks and Recreation Committee, approves the mayor's appointment of Phyllis Boyd, as the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. Proposal numbers 10 through 13 refer to the Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee and were introduced by Council Robinson. Proposal number 10 approves the mayor's appointment of Leonette M. Pierce as the director of the Citizens Police Complaint Board. Proposal number 11 approves the mayor's appointment of Lauren N. Rodriguez as the director of the Office of Office of Public Health and Safety. Proposal number 12 approves the mayor's appointment of Ernest V. Malone as the chief of the Indianapolis Fire Department. Proposal number 13 approves the mayor's appointment of Randall Taylor as the chief of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. Proposals numbers 14 through 21 refer to the Public Works Committee. Proposal number 14, introduced by Councilor Adamson, approves the mayor's appointment of Dan Parker as the director of the, of the Department of Public Works. Proposal number 15, introduced by Councilor Adamson, authorizes turn on red restrictions on Michigan and Oriental Streets in District 17. Proposal number 16, introduced by Councilor Mowry, Authorizes intersection controls at Southeastern Avenue and Thompson Road in District 25. Proposal number 17, introduced by Councilor Larison, authorizes turn on red restrictions at Washington Street and Ritter Avenue in District 12. Proposal number 18, 
introduced by Councilor Barth, authorizes turn on red restrictions at 46th Street and Central Avenue in District 7, proposal number 19. Introduced by Councilor Potts, authorizes turn on red restrictions at, sorry, at 86th Street in, and Nora Commons in District 2. Proposal number 20, introduced by Councilor Potts, modifies parking meter zone boundaries near College Avenue and Westfield Boulevard. Proposal number 21, introduced by Councilor Adamson, establishes parking meter zones near Bell Fountain Street and Massachusetts Avenue in District 17. Proposal number 36, introduced by Councilor Osley, referred to the Municipal Corporations Committee, reappoints Maggie Lewis to the Capital Improvement Board of Managers. Proposals number 37 through, 30, through 45, 47 through 50, referred to the Metropolitan and Economic Development Committee. Proposal numbers 37 through 41 were introduced by Councilor Lewis. Proposals number 37 and 38 reappoint Elizabeth Ellis and Brandon Fishburne to the Woodruff Place Economic Improvement District Board, respectively. Proposal numbers 39 through 41 appoint Michelle Powell, Jane Henniger, and Lena Cosby Jones to the Woodruff Place Economic Improvement District Board, respectively. Proposal numbers 42 through 45 and 47 through 50, I'm sorry, that's correct. 42 through 45 and 47 through 50 were introduced by Councilor Mascari. Proposals 42 through 45 reappoint Matt Kramer, Michael Halstead, Trinity Hart, and Linda Osborne to the Greater Virginia Avenue Corridor Economic Improvement District Board, respectively. Proposal numbers 47 through 50. Re uh, sorry, appoint Peggy Frame, Kelly Margo, I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, Michael Taft and Brad Vogelsmeyer to the Greater Virginia Avenue Corridor Economic Improvement District Board, respectively. Mr. President, this concludes the introductions. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. The next item on our agenda is special orders, priority business. Proposal numbers 27 through 34, 2022, are all rezonings that were certified to the Council for approval by the Metropolitan Development Commission. If no councilor wishes to call down any of these proposals for reconsideration, they will pass into law. Does anyone wish to call down any of the proposals for reconsideration? All right, hearing no motions, proposal uh, numbers 27 through 34, 2022, will now pass into law. Proposal number 35, uh, 2022, is a rezoning ordinance certified for denial by the Metropolitan Development Commission on December the 13th, 2021. If no councilor wishes to call down the proposal for reconsideration, the proposal will stand as denied. Does anyone wish to call down the proposal for reconsideration? All right, hearing no motions, the, most, the, the proposal will stand as denied. There is no business under special orders public hearing. There is no business under special orders unfinished business. So now proceed to special orders final adoption. And this next item on our agenda is proposal number 401, uh, refer to Administration and Finance Committee. Uh, Madam Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 401 gives the city of Indianapolis more flexibility when it comes to items that need to be paid in advance that have due dates. Under, this, uh, under the current statute, they cannot prepay for things which makes doing business in the city extremely hard. This proposal does not include an option to pay for vendors in advance. The proposal passed out of committee by a vote of 10 to 0, and I so move. All right, the motion is improperly moved and seconded. Other comments from councilors? All right, hearing none, let's proceed to the board for our vote. Motion carries 19 to 0. 
So the next item on our agenda is proposal number 402, referred to Metropolitan Economic Development Committee. Chairwoman Lewis. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 402 approves an amendment to the taxpayer agreement to modify the test year formula for a deficiency payment with regard to the Independent Center Hotel project because of a delayed property tax assessment of the project as a result of the COVID pandemic. Dennis, Ottoman, Dennis Oatman gave a presentation making the key point, the following key points. The amendment is necessary due to COVID and will enable the city to proceed in issuing economic development revenue bonds to refinance outstanding bonds and outstanding bond anticipation notes initially issued to finance a portion of the Independent Center Hotel project adjacent to the field house, an investment of 95 million with at least 100 full-time jobs and XBE participation. The proposed amendment to the taxpayer agreement will revise a formula for calculating, calculating whether a deficiency payment is due by the managing member and it will take into account the current assessed value of the property. The proposal passed out of committee by a vote of 11 to 0. And Mr. President, I so move. Second. Motions improperly moved and seconded. Other comments from councillors? All right, hearing none, let's proceed to the board for a vote. Motion carries 19 to 0. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 403, referred to Metropolitan and Economic Development Committee. Chairwoman Lewis. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 403 approves a declaratory resolution for the Metropolitan Development Commission designating an establishment of the State Ditch Mars Hill Flood Control Improvement District to capture incremental property tax revenue to be deposited into a, spe into a special fund for planning, design, construction, operation, and maintenance of flood control works. A presenta presentation was made making the key point, a flood control improvement district is a statutory process that identifies a residential, commercial, or industrial area within Indianapolis within a 100-year floodplain or stream, or stream in a general area that suffers from repetitive flooding problems, reduces long-term flood risk increased property values and reduces repetitive infrastructure losses an estimated annual flood insurance saving for the residents for more of more than four hundred thousand dollars and approximately one hundred thousand dollars of revenue collected in the first year the proposal passed out of committee by a vote of 11 to 0. mr president i so move the motion has been properly moved and seconded are there comments from councillors are hearing none let's proceed to the board for our vote Motion carries 19 to 0. The next item on our agenda is proposal number 404, referred to Public Safety and Criminal Justice Committee. Um, Acting Chair Boots. Thank you, Mr. President. Proposal number 404 amends the code regarding the membership of the Criminal Justice Planning Council. Uh, during the, its hearing in our committee, Councillor Robinson stated that the Criminal Justice Planning Council is a long-standing planning council and it is past time to include the director of the Marion County uh, uh, Community Corrections Agency to be part of the CJCP since they deal with public safety. Councillor Oliver moved, seconded by Councillor Ane, to send proposal number 404 to the full council with a due pass recommendation. The motion carried by a vote of 11 to 0. I so move, Mr. President. Motion is improperly moved and seconded. Are there comments from councillors? Matt, I don't have a packet. Just a moment, councillors. No, I don't have a packet over here. Uh, Councillor Boots, do you have an amendment in your packet? Do you have amendment language in your packet? <laughs> uh, I have my contacts in, so this is going to be too small for me to read. <laughs> so the font is too small for me to read. Sorry. Okay. Uh, 
pass it down. You can you read it. Please proceed. Councilor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the amendment uh, calls for striking out of the word 12 to change to 13 executive committee members and uh, sorry and changing 16 to 17 advisory members and then under B what will be 12 change the chief of public safety communications to chief of metropolitan emergency services agency and under 17 add the word and and then add 17 the Marion <coughs> County coroner uh, I so move mr. president All right, the, the motion's improperly moved and seconded um, on an amendment to proposal 404. Comments or questions from councilors, please. Uh, Councilor Mowry. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so this amendment was not heard in committee, correct? Uh, you can go to our CFO, Mr. President. All right. Please. Yes, Mr. CFO. Yes, to answer that direct question, uh, Leader Mowry, this amendment was not heard in committee. I'm happy to speak to uh, why this amendment's being offered, if that's useful to the body. Mr. President, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd please, please thank you. Please proceed. Sure, thank you, Mr. President. So um, the proposal as originally written was adding the Director of Community Corrections to the CJPC, as was noted in the uh, committee notes, or committee meeting minutes, excuse me. Um, after the most recent meeting of the Criminal Justice Planning Council, the CJPC, there was a um, debate about whether or not the coroner should also be added. Um, there was also, with the creation of the new uh, MESA agency last year, the need just to clean up the language to refer to the new director of that new agency. Um, and so um, the, at the last CJPC meeting, the movement was made and there was a unanimous vote um, including all members of the CJPC present to include the coroner as an advisory member. Um, and then this language also cleans up uh, the title of that new agency head. So that's, that's what's being adopted in the, the proposed amendment, if passed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Additional questions or comments from Councillors? All right, hearing none. Um, let us proceed then. First of all, do we have a motion on this? On this amendment? Mr. President, I'll read the proper language if you don't okay. mind. Uh, Mr. President, I move to amend section one of proposal number 404, 2021, by deleting the language that is double stricken through and adding the language that is double underlined in the highlighted portions that I read previously. If you don't mind, um, Mr. Counselor, yep, I'm happy would to. you reread the entire motion uh, so that we have it, um, we have it consistently through? So what uh, is being stricken out? What's being added to? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, you don't mind? Let's start at the beginning. It's the very I'm, beginning. Yes, please. Because I know we love taking time on these, uh, Mr. President. I move to amend section one of proposal number 404, 2021 by deleting the language that is double stricken through and adding the language that is double underlined in the highlighted portions to read as follow. Under section 283-222, CJPC membership, strike through where the proposal had read 16 and change to 17. Under uh, part B, Number 12, strike through Chief of Public Safety Communications and add Chief of Metropolitan Emergency Services Agency and under Part 17, or Part 16, add the word and to the end and under Part 17, add the Marion County Coroner. And I so move. All right, um, motion to amend has been uh, properly moved and seconded. Other comments, uh, questions from counselors? Uh, Councilor Potts. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to be sure that the the full amendment is being 
heard and officially entered into the record because I think under section A, there's also an item number 13, uh, the director of Marion County Community Corrections that I think we've, so I, uh, I'll, I'll leave that to, but I just wanna be sure that's included, thank you. Councilor Potts, this, that was already passed in committee. The highlighted portions are what we are amending tonight on the floor. Thank you. Yeah, very good, thank you for your question. Additional questions, comments from councilors? All right, um, let's proceed to the board um, for a vote on the amendment to proposal uh, 404. Motion to amend carries 19 to zero. So now uh, let us proceed then with a vote on the proposal as amended. Is there a motion? All right, comments from counselors on proposal 404 as amended. All right, hearing none, um, let us then proceed to the board for our vote on amended proposal 404. All right, the motion carries 19 to zero. There is no business under special service to district councils, and there is no business under new business. And so the next item on our agenda is announcements and adjournment. The docketed agenda for this meeting of council having been completed, the chair will now entertain motions for adjournment. Mr. President. Chair recognizes Councilor Maury. Mr. President, I have been asked to offer the following motion for adjournment by Councilor Lewis in memory of Renita Gomer Peck, Lakita Webster, and Thomas Little. By Councillor Adamson, in memory of Michael Wilson. By Councillor Graves and Osley, in memory of Mildred Marie Lair Thomason Braun. By Councillor Osley, in memory of Helen Yiki, Thomas Bridgewaters, and Vernice Williams. By Councillor Osley and Mowry, in memory of Helen Inglehart. By Councillor Mascari, in memory of Christopher Dant. By Councillor Boots, in memory of Katharina Kat May Gasecco Bean. By Councillor Bain, in memory of Robert Lewis Andrews and Michelle R. Thomas. By Councillor Gray, in memory of George Alfred Hale. Mr. President, I would like to move the adjournment of this meeting of the Indianapolis City County Council in recognition of and respect for the life and contributions of those persons I have here specifically named. I respectfully ask the support of fellow counselors. I further request that the motion be made part of the permanent records of this body and that a letter bearing the, the council seal and the signature of the president be sent to the family of each person advising of this action. Thank you, Councilor Maury. Hearing no objections, the motion is received and the request is so ordered. Hearing no further motions, we're adjourned. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you.